I'm sure you can probably hear Bryce and our friend Blake in the background. There's no avoiding it. It's just gonna be a thing. So hopefully you can hear me over anything that's happening. You can say, you can say, wanna, wanna, wanna so, uh, hi. It's been a minute. Um, I'm in a new location. We can talk about that later. Today, I am doing a video that I've been kind of sitting on for a while. I had like a full script written out for it and then I just haven't had the time to film it because my life's been a little crazy. We'll catch up on that later, but I didn't feel like I could move forward until I completed this video. And so today we're gonna talk about The Life Thief, AKA Disordered Eating aka diet culture, aka talking about orthorexia. So, <clears throat> a while ago what originally inspired this video was a YouTuber that I watch, Irene Walton, shared her orthorexia story and a lot of what she said aligned with my beliefs about body acceptance and disordered eating and so I wanted to share my thoughts on that as well as some helpful resources. Although there are some wording choices and certain ideas that I didn't necessarily agree with, I'm not interested in policing how somebody has decided to share their eating disorder story as I know how deeply personal that is. So just as a disclaimer, if you do decide to watch her video, she does mention specific numbers such as weight and clothing size. So if that's something that's triggering for you, probably don't watch. But overall, Irene's eating disorder story is very similar to mine. So I wanted to provide some additional information that was helpful for me and that might be helpful for you or anyone else who resonated with her story. According to Healthline.com, orthorexia is an eating disorder that involves an unhealthy obsession with healthy eating. It can be very hard to recognize in yourself because a lot of the behaviors associated with orthorexia are considered totally normal in today's society. Our world is obsessed with clean eating, losing weight, counting calories, and constantly promoting the latest diet trend or lifestyle change. These types of things can completely take over a person's life to the point that it's all that they think about. It negatively affects all aspects of your life, social, financial, mental, emotional, and even physical. One thing that helped me was realizing that if you are constantly obsessing over food, that is not a healthy relationship with food. Another thing that I really want to drive home for anyone watching this is that you can have orthorexia or any other eating disorder no matter what size you are. In case you missed that, you can have an eating disorder no matter what size you are. Many women of all sizes go undiagnosed and untreated because they don't look like they have an eating disorder. Take Irene's situation for example. She didn't even realize she had an eating disorder until long after she had already overcome it. Her friends and family were concerned but didn't feel like they needed to intervene because she was just being healthy. Would they have intervened if she was smaller? or if she looked like the media's depiction of an eating disorder. Disclaimer, I don't want this to sound like I'm blaming Irene's friends and family for her eating disorder. I'm just using this as an example for this is a cultural and systemic issue. And so I don't blame anyone for not knowing any better, just as I don't blame the people in my life for not recognizing that I had a problem. According to the registered dietitian Christy Harrison, diet culture is a system of beliefs that one, worships thinness and equates it to health and moral virtue, which means you can spend your whole life thinking you're broken just because you don't look like an impossibly thin ideal. Two, promotes weight loss as a means of attaining higher status, which means you feel compelled to spend a massive amount of time, energy, and money trying to shrink your body, even though the research is very clear that intentional weight loss fails more than 95% of the time. And three, demonizes certain ways of eating while elevating others, which means you're forced to be hyper vigilant about your eating, ashamed of making certain food choices, and distracted from your pleasure, your purpose, and your power. I just can't think of a more encompassing way to describe diet culture. This mentality is so pervasive in our society that, as Christy says, it really is a part of Western culture. That is why we see so many people like Irene suffer without even realizing that they're suffering. Much of this disordered eating behavior is co-signed by society, so we aren't conditioned to recognize it as something bad, especially when it is in the name of the noble cause of weight loss. 
The promise that diet culture makes of a better, happier, more successful life where you are adored by everyone you meet and life is so much easier once you achieve some arbitrary, thin ideal is a lie. You are never going to find the control over your life that you are looking for by restricting food and by making your body smaller. I know because I've tried. Friends, family, and people who've shared their stories online have tried. Thinness and weight loss are not the pinnacles of health and beauty. Let me be abundantly clear. I'm not saying that being thin or losing weight are inherently bad either. I'm saying that we as a society need to stop assuming that they were always a positive thing. Bodies will fluctuate in size throughout our lifetime and this is a totally natural and normal process. Bodies will also naturally come in a variety of shapes and sizes. That's just how bodies are. In addition, diet culture not only fails to deliver on the better, happier, healthier life it promised you, it can actually be detrimental to your overall health. Eating disorders are an obvious example of this, but it can also lead to repeated cycles of weight loss and regain, which is also proven to be very harmful. A distraction from other personal health goals and wider health determinants, reduced self-esteem, and the increase of weight stigmatization and discrimination. All of this has been proven to have negative outcomes on your overall health. I'm linking some articles down below for more information. To my knowledge, Christy Harrison is the one who coined the term the life thief as it pertains to diet culture, and I've linked an article from her website on this topic down below. In essence, diet culture is a life thief because it steals your time, money, and isolates you from connecting to others and your higher purpose. In Irene's video, she talks about how orthorexia kept her from being fully present and connecting with her family and friends, even on special occasions. She talks about how meticulously tracking everything she ate and over-exercising and obsessing kept her from being able to care about anything else. This is exactly how I felt when I realized how much of my life I had wasted betting on diet culture to fix me. It made me really sad for my former self. I've spent the majority of my life so focused on changing something outside of my control that I had no other sense of purpose. A life without orthorexia for Irene means getting to share, educate, and enjoy food while also using it as a means to connect with others. She is also able to chase her higher purpose and grow her career on YouTube. For me, a life without diet culture means chasing after my dreams without the fear of having to achieve a certain look before allowing myself to do so. It means helping others with my writing and vlog to educate and spread awareness about body acceptance. It means getting to enjoy the holidays with my family without shame or guilt about what I'm eating. In addition, no longer striving to hold ourselves to an oppressive body standard means that we have more time to focus on social justice humanitarian efforts, and changing our world for the better. So, how do you break this cycle? I first heard about the restriction pendulum from Jess Baker, who credits Dr. Deb Brigard as the creator of this concept. Essentially, what it is is the idea that we all exist on a pendulum. On one end of the pendulum, we have diet land. This is where we live when we are restricting, dieting, counting calories, or exhibiting disordered eating behaviors. When we let all of this go, the pendulum tends to swing all the way back to the other side of the spectrum called donut land. Irene talks about this experience in her recovery when she spent some time allowing all foods into her life. Many people, especially people who have lived in diet land for a long time, are scared to visit donut land but it is a very natural and normal response to prolonged restriction. And what most people find, Irene included, is that eventually the pendulum stops swinging and settles down somewhere right in the middle. This place is called discernment. This means taking what you've learned from both ends of the spectrum and intuitively applying it to how you decide to nourish your body. IntuitiveEating.org defines intuitive eating as a self-care eating framework which integrates instinct, emotion, and rational thought. There are 10 principles of intuitive eating and I've linked more information about those down below. And if you like, I can go into more depth about these principles in another video. So let me know if you want that in the comments down below. According to IntuitiveEating.org, intuitive eating essentially works in two key ways. One, by helping you cultivate attunement through the physical sensations that arise from within your body to get both your biological and psychological needs met. And two, 
removing the obstacles and disruptors to attunement, which usually come from the mind in the form of rules, beliefs, and thoughts. One thing to be aware of, as intuitive eating has risen in popularity, many diet companies have begun to co-opt the language of intuitive eating, so just be aware of that and be sure to check the links down below to better understand the principles of intuitive eating. Remember that intuitive eating calls on you to reject diet culture. So if you see a company or person offering intuitive eating as a means for weight loss, that's not real intuitive eating. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video or want more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.